in my 20s, I decided I wanted to live in a rural area. And because my grandparents uh, had a cabin on Sturgeon Lake and I was somewhat familiar with this area, I was interested in looking here as well. Bought the property in 75 and I moved out here permanently in 81. And I was always interested in gardening of uh, one fashion or another. And then it slowly evolved into more ornamental gardening. Every year seemed to have a new project or two, and so uh, after 32 years, you get quite an elaborate <laughs> setting. Actually, I expand past what I can take care of, but I enjoy the doing of new things. Since I did the garden in segments over three decades, while I tried to integrate each new project into the whole, I didn't have a concept for the whole thing. No, I don't have, exactly have a theme, though the gardens around the pond are more informal uh, than uh, other places. Uh, I like different ty kinds of gardening, and so part of the design of the garden is a result of the lay of the land, the fact that it's slowly sloping to the south. So I use terraces to take advantage of that, and also the fact that the, the soil is fairly heavy clay and to uh, enhance the drainage, that was a, a good thing as well. It's, it's a subtle thing, but uh, I think uh, when you walk through a landscape, and a garden is kind of a manufactured landscape, it's supposed to evoke some of the feeling you would have if you were taking a hike through hills and valleys and that sort of thing. So it helps if you can uh, change the nature of the sense of space. So I like it while you're walking through the garden, it can narrow down and then it can open up into a broader sense and you can narrow down again. It um, clears the mind and readies you for something new, I think. Different parts of the garden have different feels. I have a uh, pergola, you know, it's lined up, there are pillars, there are a grid work of uh, timbers and I think what I enjoy very much is the interesting interplay between geometry and natural forces that just uh, go all around it. I think I enjoy that most of all. In my stained glass often, not always, I, I like to put in a solid structure and then I like to have natural elements intertwine among them. That pleases me very much and in some ways that the garden and my stained glass express the same sensitivity. Though in some ways the, the path around the pond doesn't take advantage of that in the same way. I mean there are different things you can enjoy. I don't know if it's inherent with all humans or what, but the water is fascinating. Not only does it provide different life forms, and it's necessary for all life forms, but it reflects light, it hints at what's below, but you don't quite know what's below, so you can fill that in with what's in your head. Yeah, I love water. <laughs> I use it a lot. I like the sound of it, the look of it. Well, the first bit of the pond I had machine dug, and over time, over years, I expanded it, putting uh, the uh, waste dirt over an embankment so I could have a, a pathway around the whole pond. As far as the pools go, I so often, as we talked earlier, these are winter dreams. Wouldn't this be interesting if? And then you, you think about it for a while, and of course there's no sweat or anything involved in the winter dreams, but you, you get a good sense of it, and so they are uh, manifestations of winter dreams. I love to walk around the pond. I do that every morning. I suppose it's a journey. It's a waking up in the morning. So as part of the walk around the pond, I wanted to make a bridge out here. And uh, my first version was a zigzag bridge in the oriental tradition of a Z-shaped uh, structure. The idea was that demons cannot turn corners, and if you have demons, if you walk across a zigzag bridge, you lose them, which sounds like a neat idea. And so the current version is a little more substantial, so people don't go falling in the water, and it has some of the same feel in any case. My selection of plants has been part accidental and part 
things I've seen in catalogs, things people have given me, things I've seen in the wild. The Ohio Buckeye was a gift from a, as a seedling from a friend in Stillwater. I wasn't sure it was going to grow well here, but it has turned out to be a very appealing feature of the garden. And I'm very happy it's grown as well as it is. And uh, I often have brought in wild uh, things from the surrounding area, such as the bloodroot and the uh, wild ginger and the tall meadow rue and uh, Turks cap lilies, which I love very much. And I usually allow all these things to grow wherever they're willing to do. I, you have to recognize the seedling from a very small, otherwise you pull them right up. I've encouraged the wild plants I like very much to grow wherever they want to. And I've, I have lots of garden variety plants as well. Virtually every year the seed catalogs arrive and my mind begins to think <laughs> and, and imagine. There are obviously uh, water gardening catalogs and I think I got the uh, variegated sweet flag from one of those. I like cattails a lot, but they tend to be pretty rampant, especially, especially in shallow water. And so I have these out here and they will spread as well and they can add color and variation. Same feel as the cattails, but a little more restrained. I guess uh, when I thought of the materials I was going to use in the garden, I wanted them to be locally available, something I could manipulate. I didn't want to go into very special tools or very exotic materials. I wanted to use what was available with the skills I had. And so using the wood and collecting the rocks and using the concrete to uh, mine some of those things, uh, that's my palette, my garden palette. Uh, along with the stone and the wood and the uh, root end of the trunks for, for their interesting shapes that I've put in the garden, uh, I've also used materials such as the willows that grow along the Willow River down here. The same sort of thought is the material were available. I could imagine ways of using it that would be pleasing to the eye. Well, it's, part of it's just being playful. Let's see what we can do with this and find out the result. And you play a little while and you change your mind, you play a little differently. And there's an unlimited amount of uh, the resource, <laughs> which is also helpful to uh, make trellises or screens. And it was originally inspired, the grid work that you saw earlier, uh, by uh, people at the Old School Art Center in Sandstone, knowing that I was an enthusiastic gardener, asked me if I'd design a garden for them. And so, winter dreams again, when I was thinking about what I could use to make a more naturalistic feel to the site they had in mind. The site they had in mind was not promising. There was a solid brick wall uh, on the north end and a parking lot on the uh, south side. And so, I wanted to delineate the space in a way that made it another place to be rather than just an extension of the uh, building or the parking lot. It's a place you go into and be there. And so I made a prototype during the winter to see if it was even possible. And they liked the idea and so we've made quite a number of them. And I took the one that I made as a prototype and put it in my garden just because it was a pleasure to look at. I was interested in art ever since high school, but I never pursued it. I didn't pursue it until uh, when I was in my 30s. I think I saw a advertisement for community ed oil painting and that I went to that and so I painted with oils for about five years and enjoyed that I'm not sure I ever was extremely good at it but I enjoyed it and then as it happened my mother took a class in stained glass and I expressed some interest in that and she taught me how and that's my only instruction so uh, my mother taught me how to do stained glass after that I suppose it's mostly self-taught I start with the design and I get the design by being inspired by something in nature, a geometric um, not work or it's my interest in life. I'm an avid gardener and I see inspiration all around me in the garden and so I very often use floral designs. I have a half dozen or more ideas in my head thinking that eventually they'll mature and I'll, I'll make a design out of them. But I also use occasional birds I like. Stained glass, you cannot do a lot of detail. 
So you, you, you have to decide what is important in the design. Feathers tend to lend themselves to individual pieces that you can uh, put in a, a pleasing design, as well as large petal flowers do as well, or, or leaves, so that helps. I do do quite a number of uh, geometric designs with uh, sometimes double glass in them, and I, I like Celtic knots. Intertwining, overlapping, um, I suppose some hint of Irish heritage there, but uh, I think I arrived at it independently. <laughs> So uh, often uh, I have um, pieces that combine all of those things. And uh, so you have to make the design and over the years you learn what is possible. What, uh, how small a piece you can reasonably use, how, how often can you, you can use it. I mean if you have many pieces of small glass it just uh, it loses itself. So, you make the design, you transfer the design onto contact paper and you cut out the contact paper and you put those pieces on glass and then you cut the glass so that you end up with uh, individual pieces in the shape you want. But there's two techniques of stained glass. One they use a channel called came, it's the older one. What I use is the copper foil technique which is a thin strip of uh, copper foil with a sticky back and you you uh, press it onto the edge of the glass and it overlaps on each side all around and you do that with each individual piece of glass and when you have them all completely foiled then you solder them. Solder is a mixture of tin and lead and it will adhere to the copper not the glass. It will just adhere to the copper. And so that's what holds the whole piece together. I had this inspiration one winter that I would make uh, symbols of uh, rebirth. It might have something to do with the fact that I had cancer for a while and <laughs> overcame that. But anyway, that might have been the motivation. So I looked for different mythological symbols or scientific symbols, or for me, uh, garden symbols that would signify rebirth or the cycle of life and death. And so I, I found this uh, old satellite dish, which actually I, did, I got the satellite dish and then designed the shape of the uh, gazebo so it would fit it, <laughs> and figured out how I could make curved panels to lay in the various segments of the satellite dish with a symbolic sun in the middle. Well, I, I work in two different places. In the winter, I have a studio uh, upstairs of our house. But in the summer, which is, uh, I work out here in my summer studio, my garden studio, and uh, I love it. I love just being here. <laughs> and uh, it's inspiration, and it's, uh, you would think that maybe it'd be distracting, but, uh, and I do find myself occasionally looking for turtles as they might go by, but it's uh, refreshing. And so, yeah. I, I, I love to work out here. Most of my selling has been through the Autumn Wind Studio Tour. I haven't been that aggressive a, uh, a salesperson, but uh, I actually do about as much as I enjoy doing, which is the perfect place to be. I have been doing stained glass for uh, 25 years or more, but, uh, and had sold a few commissions over that period of time, but when I retired, I decided I would try to do it more seriously, and that's when I joined the tour. This coming year will be my sixth year as being part of the Autumn Wind Studio Tour, which takes place in September of every year. For It's varied a bit, but for two weekends, usually two long weekends. We've had as few as 110, and we've had uh, almost 300. So it's, uh, it varies quite a bit. I hope that uh, even if they didn't uh, buy stained glass, that they would enjoy that experience. And I enjoy sharing the garden with people who do.